welcome to the MMA Roadshow, episode number 69. We're in Las Vegas. My name is John Morgan. Back by popular demand, it is cold coffee. <laughs> and not only is cold coffee backed by popular demand, but we are in our old stomping grounds here. Buffalo Wild Wings, Warm Springs, and Durango. Frosty beverages are flowing. Sports is everywhere. And uh, I got to say, it, feel, it feels good to be back. You know, we kind of we kind of ended up making uh, the Casa de Cold Coffee <laughs> the, uh, you know, the home location when we were here in Las Vegas. And I think there were a lot of reasons for that. Uh, number one, uh, you're too lazy to drive down here. Yeah. This is out in the middle of nowhere. It's not in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> uh, it did take me 20 minutes to get out here. Very convenient. Uh, so you don't like to make it out here. Uh, number two, uh, the bar tabs were just getting ridiculous. Yeah. I was, I was, I was going broke. <laughs> I was going it's broke. It's true. It's true. I need Anheuser Busch to be a sponsor or something if we're gonna if we're gonna keep doing this. I agree. And and it's nice. It was nice being at the crib. Yeah. You know, having you to be able to come over and. You know, if we had food, I can offer free food or whatever, which I guess it didn't really offer that much. Oh, no, you didn't. So that's <laughs> not part of the mix I guess, at all. I, I guess I take that part off. <laughs> Never mind. I ate the food before you got <laughs> there. Um, no, it's good. It's good. You know, it's funny. It's been a while since we've been here. I kind of feel like that's when I was like, hey, let's take the table in the back. I kind of feel like, you know, we haven't been here in a while. So now so we're the dorks with the headsets again? With the on dorks again? with the headsets again. Yeah. You know, we kind of lost our, our, our B-dub swagger. We and did. We, were kinda, we had kind of had a feel here where we fit in, and now now it does feel a little weird. Now now we're we're kind of in a fishbowl. Yeah, we even wanted to be in the back, the back porch, and they didn't even turn the lights on anymore. Yep. So, I mean, like, has, maybe stuff's changed here. Maybe it's just middle of the week. They're like, oh, we don't want to put the porch lights on or whatever. I think they call it a patio. Or a patio, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's been that long. I thought it was a porch. <laughs> I love it. Well, first of all, you know how childish I am, so I can't not mention the fact that this is episode 69. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask you to have, like, some Beavis and Butthead laughing, like, queued up, or maybe, like, some... <laughs> some <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. We got the... Well, you, you were able to get that. Uh, did, did, I was also going to ask you for some Quagmire from uh, Family Guy. Did giggity. You? <laughs> giggity. That's odd. <laughs> it's amazing that sometimes you have this audio picked out where I'm not even thinking about it. And... I mean, Conor McGregor, I, I think, would definitely make a nice joke. <laughs> well, John, uh, I feel... Um, okay, that's I, not going anywhere. <laughs> <do you? That's laughs> I was actually I'm just trying to listen to some... I'm going to let you off the I was, hook right I there. actually was trying to listen to some of his press conference things the other day, and I was like, I should really pay attention to like some of the things he says. And he does... He has certain phrases sure. that he uses all the time. And... Uh, well, now he's launched I, his own website, themaclife.com. Can you believe that as well? I think he's just trying to keep giving his, his girlfriend a job, you know, and he's figuring like, hey, you know, here's, here's a way to take this money and go with it and whatever, and more power to him. He's got the money to do it. Fuck it, why not? BJPen.com, who the fuck I know, that's you know? what I'm saying. Please don't make it another BJPen.com situation. Yeah, I hope not. I mean, but who knows? I mean, he's got, he's got enough people over there. And if it's, even if it's a matter of, you know, is it really going to be a new site? I know they are doing some other ones, but it's also, you know, maybe now going to be more exclusive stuff that of his training that people want to do, which oh, totally. I guess kind of sucks for the rest of us media. They're like, oh, we'd love to get our hands oh, on yeah. it, where now he can kind of control that. Well, you know, more more power to him. Kudos to him for, for doing that or whatnot. So now all you people that are totally – you know, just living and breathing everything that Conor McGregor. Now you can go to the Mac, the Mac Life, Life, and you can have the Mac Life 24/7. And Man, you know that's where all his get big as news much is as going you want. Now. <laughs> it is interesting, though. I mean, here's a guy that has figured out that he doesn't need the media. He doesn't. He can control the message 100% on his own. Doesn't need to wait for us to do an interview. Doesn't have to reach out. He's like, you know what? I mean, that's to me that is a master of social media that yep. just says I don't even need the media anymore. I'm going to say what I want to say when I want to say it's it. It's true, and if it's on the internet, it's true. Totally, 100. So if he puts it out there, it's 100 percent true because the internet vets everything that goes out there. <laughs> There's just an automatic filter <laughs> when you hit send on it's WordPress. Like, it's like, oh, this is 100 percent true. <laughs> it is Word. Well, dude, it's been a while since we've gotten to get together and, and do this. Uh, you missed UFC 200. I haven't really talked to you much since then. I mean, I know that we Did all – Did I miss it? Get, well, that's what I was going <laughs> to ask you. Is like, I know we all get excited for these big moments, you know, USC 200. But the truth was you had a, a freelance gig um, that, that paid fairly well. And, and But as part of that gig, you had to miss USC 200. Yeah. And I got to wonder, 
Because I know you eventually watched it, and I just I wondered, did, I, and did I you actually, feel vindicated? Like, oh, dude, I'm glad I no, wasn't even I there mean, that night. I mean, you never want an event to, to be a stinker. You know, we've certainly seen our fair share of stinker events or whatnot. And I actually I, – I, I did actually pull it up on, on the phone and was actually kind of watching it a little Don't bit worry. while I was waiting. It, granted, it was just like rehearsals there for the event. It was a Cisco Live uh, – so it's like all the Cisco IT man leadership management or whatever. So the, uh, you have all these Cisco products out there and all these companies that buy into the Cisco way and employ their whatever. So this is their way of saying, all right, send your, That's your the leaders. That's the song, the thong song, right? Yeah, it was totally. It was awesome. I actually think I had a cameo <laughs> in, the, in the new video. Um, it was their way of sort of just breaching out and be, uh, teaching leader, uh, leadership and whatnot and all this other stuff. I mean, whatever. It's a, a typical corporate thing. I mean, there were some things that actually – we're interesting to listen to some of the analytics stuff they they were talking about. Okay, some of the other stuff. True. I mean, granted, it was not one of those ones where here let's explain the Cisco router and let's talk about wiring diagram. It was not that by any means. Oh, okay. It was more, okay. you know, they were trying to give motivational things. They had the guy that uh, the creator that the, the the host of like that show, the Brain Games. I forget what his name is, Jason something or other. I've seen that show. And he was That's there. Fun. You know, he was on there and he gave this really uplifting sort of speech talking about. You know, all this other stuff of where technology is going, you know, and we look at, you know, say robots and, and cyber genetics and whatever, and you're employing all this other stuff. You know, everybody always says, oh, we're going to make these robots and someday, you know, they're going to take over and kill us or whatever. And his whole thing was like, you know, it's not like these are our children and you know, they are our children, but they are us. They are the way we are going and where we are moving forward. So it's not so much that we are creating the thing that's going to uh wipe us out or whatever we're actually helping create our future selves our newer selves so and all this other stuff my head. dude it was like it was nuts man it was going on but it was actually it was that just really makes really me feel so stupid <laughs> listening to it. it was pretty cool you know i mean it was i talking have a podcast where i talk about cage fighting <laughs> <laughs> it was he did really it was it was a, it was a really good speech but there was a lot of good stuff so but yeah you're right i had to take this first day of the gig to get the other days and, and it's tough nobody wants to miss an event especially an event that was being touted as the biggest and baddest and best thing that it right. you know was coming and you know it's unfortunate but you know you know let, let's be real you know i watch events from the back room where you know i get the you know the scrums and other stuff and i'm grateful i'm not i'm not knocking it down or whatever but it's different, it's different. than being out i got that feeling on the, on the, falls, on the, man. On I was the front the, row i was yeah. the press room guy it's a lot different feel it's a lot different feel so um, you know, sad it wasn't, but I was glad I had the uh, other work and stuff. But I did happen to kind of pull up the fights on my phone and was watching some of them as it was happening. Yeah. I was kind of stinking because I was just sitting there waiting for rehearsal or whatever. So there's a couple points where, you know, if you look at the camera, they had their big viewfinder on the top, and there was a little notch there that I was able to put my phone there. So <laughs> it looked like I was looking at the big screen and I was watching brilliant. the fight. So, That's brilliant. Um, but it was good. So, But I did actually go back after the fact when I got back home and rewatch the fights, and I think that was probably the – the toughest bits was like, you know, you're asking me to kind of, hey, can you grab that one footage and the blah, blah, blah. And I hadn't got to that yet on oh, the fight. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, ah. Oh. I was like, did this motherfucker just spoil? He just spoiled that fight for me? I was like, ah. Oh. You know, but, it's you it's know. funny. You mentioned watching the fights in the back in Sioux Falls. You know, I was the videographer. And I, I will say this for people that don't know, because I had to experience it for the first time, was that there are times when based on the flow of how things are going, you guys are in the back interviewing people after a fight that you didn't watch. Yeah. Because it was impossible. Not because you were just, like, not paying attention, but it's just you can't. the shooting. way they come back. Yeah. And I had to do that. And what was really interesting about it was I was the only media member there. Yeah. So I was – Faking Going to the generic the questions that, oh, or whatever. Dude, it's so work. frustrating. It's tough. So frustrating. All right, well, the last time we talked, and, and where I wanted to go with USC 200, the last time we talked, you know, it was the night after we had found out about John Jones not being at 200. But then since that time, we found out that Brock Lesnar failed a test before and a test the night of. Today, you know, as we sit down and record this on Thursday like we always do, it was George Sullivan who hasn't tested positive yet but was pulled from USC on Fox 20 for a possible uh, issue with the doping policy. And Chad Mendez got his two-year suspension official. I just – how are you feeling right now about this drug test stuff, man? Because I I don't want to say I'm, I'm disgusted by it, but, dude, it's getting frustrating. I feel like it's all we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, it sucks. I mean, it does put a lot of merit into a lot of the stuff that some fighters have been saying the whole time that – 
you know, yeah. everybody's using or everybody's doing whatever. You know, do I believe that everybody's using? Probably not. But do are there maybe a larger percentage than maybe what we initially thought? Yeah, definitely could, you know. But also, too, I mean, I'm not one of these guys that's following USADA's guidelines where it's like, you know, they could – I don't know how often they update their list. This could be something that happens all the time. I don't know if they send a blanket-wide thing, say, all right, this is now not a good thing, you right. know, where – you know, maybe these fighters have been taking supplements and certain things that are good, and then six months later, USADA changes stuff, and, you know, maybe the information doesn't broadly get out there. Maybe that's affecting it, or, you know, or it's just a matter of the tech, the testing's getting more technical, and, you know, it's able to catch things that before we're able to slip in. I mean, I think that's been a, that's been a battle that's been happening in other sports for many, many years, baseball, football. You know, the guys that have the money are able to get – you know, with these fitness guys or whatever, they're getting product that's ahead of the game, that's not detectable, it's not whatever sort of things. You know, I think that stuff's been happening. Right. And, I mean, and, and you hear that from guys at, usually after they retire from the sport. They're like, yeah, this is kind of going on, this is whatever. You know, and I won't be ignorant and say that that's probably not happening in our sport. You know, it's it's the nature, I think, of guys when they have the money, they Especially can actually the purchase for that stuff, and they're at the highest level. What gets me the most is – Say I go. Get, say if I'm going to get a job, and uh, which could happen any day now. You know, you sat, you sat might say, "Fuck you," you know, whatever. But uh, you know, so I go. I pee in a cup at a place. I go to Quest, wherever. Pee in a cup. I get the results the next day. Oh. They call my my the 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 employer calls and whatever. I know that Quest is not getting the amount of money that USADA and these testing places are getting from the UFC. So for the fact that they're taking millions and millions of dollars to implement this process, but they can't get results for two weeks, That's I, call, the thing I call BS. Brock Lesnar was the least surprising failed test. I mean, we just – I mean, I hate to be that guy, but come on. We all knew he was coming from professional wrestling. You're like, dude, you know he's been taking something over there. So it's the least surprising failed test. But the handling of the situation for it not to come back until after the fact – it's just – it's unacceptable, yeah. man. There's there's no excuses for it, man. It, 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 it has to be fixed. And, you know, you know, something you touched on earlier is, like, you know, how many people are doing it? I don't know. Now I'm starting to get worried. You know, people used to say everybody. Of course, you still got Nate Diaz and Nick Diaz saying everybody's on it. Yeah. You know, we heard fighters in the past say 50%. I used to, con I used to think it was probably 25 to 30%. Now – I don't know, man. I, I really don't know. I, it might be everybody using something, at least pushing the envelope a little bit. I'm not saying everybody's shooting up HGH, yeah. but who knows what's what, what's happening out there. And because of that, I, I, I feel like things are actually getting better. I feel like these failed tests, there's going to be enough of them where people are going to start to get the message. You know, yeah. when it is John Jones getting popped, when it is even Brock Lesnar getting popped. I think, I think this whole program is positive. I really do. I sure. feel like it's a good thing. But that is unacceptable, man. It has to be fixed. These tests have got to be in on time. Yeah. And there can be no excuses. Not we checked the wrong box, we did this, whatever, man. To me, that was a complete failure by USADA. Yeah. It was you know, you hate to think that, you know, that the you would you would like to think that they are an outside body. They are doing whatever, that there's no influence coming in from the UFC or whatnot. I hate to be that conspiracy person that's throwing that out there, but it's hard it's hard to not think that there's something there. You know, the amount of money that they're pumping in them, it, just the timing of things, it, it couldn't have worked any better for their favor, you know, when it was like, all right, we need to get this guy and come. All right, you know, we're going to do whatever, you know, things we need to do. Oh, yeah, he cleared, he checked, he did everything, blah, blah, blah. you think if they were able to make that statement, they would have got the initial okay from you, Sada, like he's good to go. Rather than just say, "Oh yeah, he peed for us. Right. He's good to go." Right. You know that that's a big, big difference. No, I, I mean, listen. Talking to Jeff Davidsky, like that dude seems about as straight and narrow as they come, man. Yeah. Like he does not seem like he's interested in being bought or being influenced or being told, like, "Hey, look the other way" or whatever, man. In, in every conversation I've had with him, not to mention his track record, he seems like somebody's interested in doing the right thing. But you're right, man. It's just you don't want to be that guy. But when it's Brock Lesnar, when it's when it's the the multi-million dollar guy that's getting a two and a half million guarantee that you know is generating pay-per-view buys. Then you throw in all the fact. I mean, I guess they wouldn't have known at the time that John Jones was going to test positive. But, I mean, you start throwing that in. You're like, dude, what, I mean, what, you know, we're talking about the disappointment of USC 200. What would have yeah. been if there was no Brock Lesnar there? Yeah. 
it is. It, it, I just I don't know how you don't look at it and go. Yeah. I mean, this is it right for them to to at least not. I mean, you would think that if they were trying to pull the you know the sheet over somebody's eyes or whatever, Jones would have slipped through. That would he would have made there it through go. the competition. There you go. So for them to kind of have that happen, you know, definitely is a good round in their favor saying, yes, this is working. We're catching people. Sucks it still took two weeks or whatever, you know. But, yeah, it just it's still the timing of things, and I don't know how you fix that. Can they go to USADA or whoever and say, we're paying you X amount of dollars. you got to bring this up quicker. We need a 48-hour window, something. I mean, with that amount of money, you would think they would have dedicated people that could run the test. These Absolutely. are not crazy tests. They're just, for the most part – Blood, I understand, is a little bit different. The urine, half the time you get these urine tests, they could just stick a fucking one of those little strips in it, and it can tell you whether it's positive or negative at a, at a certain, uh, you know, million yeah, parts yeah, you per whatever. Yeah, you can at least get the cutoff. You can at least, yeah, need. get it to the cutoff, and then boom. And then if you need to say, all right, well, this is a little iffy, then take it to a stricter, or, you know, or more stringent testing. Get the exact you nanogram know, level or whatever it may be. at least be able to say, be. yes, within some reason, okay, this person's clear a little bit rather than, you know, I don't know what testing they sort of do or at this point when they just take samples and they're, all right, you're good, you're good. We're trusting that this sample is going to work for you. Go ahead and do your competition. We're going to get the real results in two weeks from now for some reason. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I'll tell you what, man, I I feel for Mark Hunt. You know, sometimes when guys kind of speak out about stuff, you're like, bro, calm down. You're being a little ridiculous. Mark Hunt. You know, him saying he wants the full two and a half million, he wants his UFC release, he's upset. I mean, the guy's faced a cheater three times now. Yeah. Three times now. And, dude, I mean, sitting underneath Brock Lesnar, taking punches from that guy, and and then knowing on top of it he's cheating when you had suspicions already, like, I can't fault Mark Hunt for his complaints at all. And uh, I I tell you what, man, the idea of – a guy getting someone else's purse who's caught cheating, I don't know if it could be 100%, but it really doesn't seem like a bad idea. I, and I've, at I, least I don't, a portion. At least a portion. I mean, we give a portion for missing weight. Yeah. Why can't we give a portion for a guy testing yeah. positive? And it's funny. I, I, I don't know why. I hadn't really – it's idiotic on my part, I guess. I hadn't really thought about that before, but I'd never really heard anybody mention it. But as soon as Mark Hunt brought it up, it was like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Yeah, and I can understand his frustration and, and whatnot. You know, I mean, but I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I'm kind of torn two ways. I mean, I know that, you know, the steroids can help, you know, depending on all the different things, gives him more oxygen or whatever it was or was able to help recover depending on whatever sort of thing. But as for the techniques of how he held Mark down, steroids isn't doing that. Well, that's true. Whatever he's taking. I mean, like, that's, uh, you know, that, that's true. you know, that didn't win that fight for him. Just like, you know, when – you know, and uh, Silva kicked, you know, knocked Belfort out. You know, say he was even using at that point. You think that steroid delivered that precision kick at that moment? You know, I mean, th- no, some of the ways of, like, what, what Brock was able to do, I'm not really sure if a lot of that. I, I think it probably helped him get to the point where maybe he had better cardio, maybe he had better strength, and maybe that's what ena- uh, enabled him to get in the position to hold him down, but but being able to hold him down and do what he was doing, that's that technique, that's not a that's not you I can't gr- take a supplement for I that. I agree with that. And I used to agree with that argument when people talk about it with Barry Bonds and say, listen man, that didn't help him hit those home runs. Like you still gotta have the eye hand coordination or whatever. And I and I I get that. There's something to be said for that. But the muscle mass that Brock Lesnar has, yeah. how much of that came from the fact that he was using performance enhancing uh, uh, you know supplements. Yeah. And, and never really stopped as what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, and was <laughs> able and was able to help build that muscle mass. Or yeah. you know, you talk about the recovery and training, like a, a, a guy that's able to practice every single day without without pause because he has you know uh, the, the recovery where nobody else has that recovery and they have yeah. to take a break. Um, you know, you, you can't say that that chem- chemical aid isn't helping. You're right. At the it's end of true. the day, it's not the execution of the technique. But I wonder about the you know the process of getting there. Yeah. That's I don't crazy. know. I I, uh, I I will say this, though. The other thing I think about Mark Hunt voicing his concerns is I think if there was ever a time to make noise, it's right now. While, yeah. the, while the sale is being processed, new owners are coming on. You know, obviously the old regime rubbing everybody the wrong way probably didn't do you any good. Um, yeah. But I think right now if there was ever a time to try to make some noise and just see what happens. It's true. There's I think a whole it's right new, now. Yeah, there's a whole new – 
regime a whole new set of eyes, and let alone, you know, now it's coming in, whether it goes to this committee or a board or whatever the, the thing, you're going to get a whole group of people talking about this and how do we fix this? All right, you know, instead of having two or three guys really having that conversation at a high level mm -hmm. and, you know, ultimately they're thinking about the bottom line. I think a lot of these guys coming in, you know, that are taking the ownership, they realize, yes, it's about the bottom line, but also I think they want to grow the sport and grow it, you know, so I think they need to address that. I mean, maybe a new fresh set of eyes and perspectives. Maybe you're right. This is the perfect time. Maybe they say, all right, we need to come up with more punishment this you know, just letting USADA deal their own punishments. Maybe we need to have something else out there as well and do our own little things. And maybe it is taking away that purse. You know, maybe instead of giving them that check at the end of the night like they normally do, you know, I know now they hold their bonuses, but they also give them the show money. Mm -hmm. Maybe they hold the show money to make sure that everything's good. And then if it's not good, boom, I'm just going to let you know in your contract that if you fail this thing, your opponent's going to get 20% of your show money. That's gonna make a lot of people go a lot cleaner. You I, know what I, I, mean? I would hope so. I just, I just, I hope Usada. Again, I really do feel like the USC is trying to do the right thing. I feel like Usada is trying to do the right thing. I feel like people have the intentions in the right places. I think from talking to people behind the scenes that everybody believes this is the right direction. But Usada has got to fix this. We cannot have any more situations where we're getting pre-fight test results back post-fight. Yeah. I just, I think that's got to be like fixed. a week after post-fight. It's insane. Speaking of uh, drug use. Uh, <laughs> I think As it, you pointed at me for some reason. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean recreational drug use. <laughs> Speaking of performance-enhancing drugs, uh, it deserves to be mentioned, I believe, that Chael Sonnen is once again being tested by USADA, clearing the way for a re potential return to the UFC. His suspension is pretty much up at this point. I don't remember the exact date. Uh, he was suspended on July 23rd, 2014, but I think it actually dated back. Um, the two failed tests he had were May 24th and June 5th. So I think, to be honest with you, I think his suspension's already over. If not, uh, if it was two years from the 23rd, then that's Saturday. Uh, his suspension will be over. He has been tested twice by USADA. Uh, I was told it was actually Thursday of last week. It was listed as two tests, so you have to assume that was blood and urine at the same time. Uh, and I got a hold of him today for a brief moment, and I asked him point blank, are you coming back? And I wrote about it, but you got to hear it. Listen, listen to the man himself. He gave me this answer. Not if the test is, is as good as I remember it. Short, sweet, to the point, Chael Sonnen. Uh, <laughs> well, I say to the point, not exactly to the point. Uh, leaving a little bit of a veil of mystery there whether or not he's going to come back. Now, of course, uh, that's all I could get from Chael Sonnen, but I did make some additional calls and try to check around and see what I could find out. What I heard is this. Chael Sonnen is training. He is absolutely training, uh, but not necessarily fight-level training. He's just a guy that, uh, as you can imagine, has been involved in athletic competitions his whole life. Uh, training is a part of his life, and he's continuing to do that. And uh, from what I understand, he'd actually put on a couple of pounds and wanted to actually uh, try, to, try to shave a few of those pounds off. But... Uh, it is interesting because we know about this four-month testing period that you got to have. I think, honestly, that Chael would probably get that same waiver that Brock Lesnar did because when Chael was suspended, USADA wasn't around yet. So I think he would probably actually get that same exemption. However, based on what Chael went through, I think people would look at it, especially now that Brock Lesnar tested positive. Yeah. I think people would raise hell if he got that waiver for that four-month testing period. So... I guess I ask you, Cold Coffee, are you still interested in seeing Chael Sonnen fight? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, Chael, one, it, he's he's fun to be around during fight week. You know, I mean, as a media person, he was fun. As a uh, former staff member, you know, just having to deal with him during fight week, he was awesome. He's always been fun to be around. He's a funny dude. Um and when he's serious and when he's fighting what, how he can fight, he's absolutely incredible. He's a beast. So, yeah, I would welcome Chael back in a heartbeat. I, I never had any sore feelings Even at all. Even though he's a proven cheater. A, yeah. A proven admitted Bring it on. cheater. Bring it on. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, granted, you know, not to, to sound like a, 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 an asshole and just or like, you know. Or a hypocrite. you know. <laughs> um, or a hippopotamus for this fact. <laughs> um He's just he's just fun to watch. So it's purely it's like you know I think even with Brock you know uh, just for the spectacle you know I knew it was nothing but a spectacle watching Brock. So when I think of Chael coming back, 
I want to see the whole everything again. I want to see the fight week talk leading up to it. You yeah. know, I want to see all that sort of He's stuff. Gifted, you know, man. I mean, he he is, and uh, you know, there's there's been times where he had some fights where it's just like, oh, you know, was he even really there, whatever. But it was still overall, I had fun watching him throughout that week leading up to it, and you know. I have no problem with him coming back. I'm a big fan of, Chan, uh, for, of Chael. I mean, you're right. Uh, you know, he has had some problems in the past, but if he tests fine and whatever, you know, I, all's forgotten for me. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not going to be somebody that's going to harp on a guy, you know, over and over and over. You know, same thing like, I mean, I wouldn't mind watching Paul Harris fight again in the future. I mean, he has some serious issues. Sure. And that's a guy that I, I still think when he keeps it clean and he does what he needs to do, He's a good fighter, and he's fun to watch. Um, so I'm, I'm not one of these ones that is going to, you know, have a stick and shake it at him every time. Oh, you were so bad. I'm never going to forgive you. Because, you know, I, li I like to think of myself. I've made many mistakes in my life, and I've changed, and you grow on. I think we all have been through that, you yep. know. You know, whatever that line for all you people that do the religious thing, you know, don't be the first to cast stones, you know. Right, right. Um you know, yes, Chael's had – he's had issues. But if he tests good and he does – you're right, they probably won't give him the four-month expense uh, – whatever, but I don't know if they really even need to at this point. You know, there's nothing really slated, so just let him do his thing. But let him come back, and let, you know, test him, do whatever. And uh, I'd love to see Chael fight. Uh, he's been fun. I mean, whether – even if it's not in the UFC, I don't care. I just want to see him fight again. I think uh, – just I just Googled it real quick. I think the actual line is, don't throw a rock at a mother when you know you've done some dumps <laughs> too. I think that's what it is. You see? See? That's like the new, new <laughs> testament, right? <laughs> that, oh, yeah. That's the brand new testament, that's son. The brand new, that's the the best brand new testament. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I should say, if you like what you're hearing, that means you are not Jason in Arizona. Oh, no, Jason. Jason in Arizona took time to log into iTunes and say, I've stuck with it hoping it would get better. This is what happens when a new sport starts and there aren't real journalists and broadcasters involved. You had to get overblown fans acting the part. Morgan was unlistenable on Junkie Radio with all of his, as I was saying, and other verbal crutches. Oh, poor John, you had to work long hours for your job. Keep telling us about it. It is so interesting. You're here because you're supposed to be a reporter. Stop trying to be a personality because yours is bad. And why don't you just get it over and consummate the relationship with your new co-host so we don't have to deal with the annoying flirty banner? Now we get to hear the humble brag of how the fighters know you. The show is okay when you stay in your lane reporting what is happening. If someone wants MMA, MMA personality podcast, there are so many others like Anik and Florian, Rogan, and now Matt Sarah. Those For, are good podcasts. Just, I mean, those are fantastic podcasts. First of all, I don't understand. The new co-host, I mean, I don't know if he's talking about Mike Bond or Simon Head or Dan Stuff. I'm a Could little. Bond. He's He's got those, like. Doe eyes. Like that a, is like true, man. He's, he is. Now that he's done something new with his hair, it's, it's really, <laughs> I don't know, I'm frustrated. Yeah. But this one hurt because you know what? This one took us down. It's a one star. It took us down from a five star podcast to a four and a half. Hey, it's bound to happen. Sometimes, you know, it's not for everybody. But it is what it is. It's what we started. Well, it's if you're not talking. Jason in Arizona <laughs> and you want to. If you want to get he, well, he's dealing with a lot of heat. Arizona is really burning up right now. That's true. You've I seen don't the Phoenix temperatures. Yeah, that stuff's nuts right now. So, but it is what it is. But I think your personality is all right. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I don't really want to be a personality. I'm just here talking about MMA. But anyway, if you happen to have more positive feelings and want to help me out of my depression now, <laughs> you could log into iTunes, leave us a, a review. I kind of like it. I like I like you, Jason. I like you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All because he didn't talk shit about you. That's because I've been gone for so long. They forgot about me. It's the new co-host. Oh, I'm man. that old co-host. All right, let's talk uh, this week. UFC on Fox 20, Chicago. You and I are not going to be there. Uh, we are here in Las Vegas. But you did have lunch with Holly Holm out there uh, in Los Angeles earlier this week. I could not attend because – It wasn't just me. Well, I mean, there were other people. You were part of a luncheon with Holly Holm. She yeah, did that's sit right. across You didn't have me. a Wait, lunch no, I was date. down at the end. Yeah. Uh, no, no. You were at the end? Well, you didn't get there on time? I was at the end. No, 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 because we moved all the chairs, you know, from, oh, from the middle. So. Right, right, right. And then, you know, usually Karen takes that one right to the right. So, And then some other Latino um, media group came. And well, you got to be racist. Well – uh, I don't know. I don't want to just call them Mexican. I don't <laughs> think they're Mexican. Is Latino or Hispanic? Oh, Hispanic media? I, being, I, I don't know. I'm trying to put the correct term. Yeah, I, just I don't being know. A so I, yeah, I ended up sitting on the end, but I forgot my camera was right in the front. So there's a lot of times when I was packing up, I was chatting with her. 
and we were like straight on. So I was thinking I was sitting right in so front of So what was the feel like? Because I heard a lot of feedback. I didn't get a chance to see the, the full lunch and whatever. I didn't get to go, I should say, number one, just because the flights were, were so expensive. And we make those little day trips out there. But we have a budget. We do have to stay within. It was too expensive, so you had to go solo. Um, but I did hear some frustration that it seemed like everything was about – Rhonda or everything was about Misha or everything was about no I mean I, I would say yeah maybe a lot of the Misha it wasn't so much the Rhonda thing but I mean and even yeah it was, a question came out you know is it suck that the, you know most of these questions have been about something separate but this was one of the first times that a lot of time had taken place you know not a lot of time since the loss you know we heard the immediate reactions but now more time was able to happen where she was able to kind of step away from it, come at it at a, a, at a, with a new set of eyes. She had a new opponent. I think so much had happened right afterwards. There was so much, oh, are you going to fight Cyborg? Oh, you want a rematch? You want all this stuff that we kind of played out and got to watch. So now I think it was one of the first chance for us to really go back and ask, you know, how was things? You know, you know, are, is that chapter done? I'd be wrong if we didn't ask about, you know, now, to. you know, with the Misha thing. I mean, she for so long she wanted that immediate rematch. So, yeah, it's wrong for us to not say, well, is that a fight that you still want to happen? You know, is that Cyborg fight? Is that wrong to ask? You know, like, because that's still a fight that's very interesting. But a lot of times, you know, I think part of it, too, maybe as Shevchenko's star rises, there will be more of us to really to have, you know, a broader knowledge maybe of that, of where she's coming True. from. She's... Not I feel I like she's say. still a question mark. She is kind of a question her mark. Her first so. fight, she came in on short notice. Her second fight, Amanda Nunes, didn't look good at the time. But now you look back and go, well, Amanda just obliterated Misha yeah. Tate. Maybe that loss wasn't that bad. So I still feel like there's a lot of question marks. There are. And, you know, it, but it wasn't. It wasn't so much even, Ronda. Like, I really – it did come up, but it, I don't even really remember it even happening much. I mean, maybe a, an odd question or two. I think it was just because, yeah, there was so much focusing about – the growth from where after that loss getting to that point so of course you got to bring up to who she lost so we were talking about Misha and maybe we didn't really get on too much with Valentina but I, you know Holly was kind of she was very very focused but she's also was very very sort of reserved and and, and quiet she's not one she's not going to talk a lot of junk right. so even if we started saying well, what are you, what's your, your opponent going to do now what are you going to do here She's just going to kind of tell you, you know, she focused on her training. She did this, whatever. And yes, my opponents are dangerous, yada, yada, yada. The sort of staple answers or whatnot. So, I mean, you know, I don't think it was that people were ignoring that or maybe drawing too much upon questions for Misha and Rhonda. It was just, um, just one of those things sort of catching up. And I think as Valentina, you know, maybe certainly if Valentina gets the win in this, Next time Valentina fights, there's going to be a lot more questions yeah. and a lot more stuff about that. Um, I think, yeah, you're right. It, she's just a lesser known of the of the the two sort of things, and it'd be wrong if we didn't do the whatever thing. But um, but I was dressed. In fact, I thought we'd maybe, and it didn't even get to the end, um, address the whole like John Jones thing, you know, and what mm. what camp was like for that, you know. And I thought it was interesting that she said Jones has been back in the gym, you know, has been training, has been helping out a little bit. He's still being around, you know, so he's not tucking his tail and running and hiding but also you know it's got to be interesting for him too you know with no you're not really sure what the foreseeable future is happening you know do you go in and still grind with the same intensity or do you just go in get your cardio workout be there for your teammates you know show your face or whatever you know um but she was very very you know not uh, gave a good you know just political correct question you know answer you know she was kind of she was kind of right in the middle I think that's you know, Holly, though. You know, I think I think she and I think a lot of it not just her personality but I think a lot of it comes from like her time in boxing where like you know she was high profile in boxing yeah. as well and I feel like she's she's comfortable being there and she, it's like I don't want to say her her questions I don't want to say that, it's, that her answers sound rehearsed but her answers just sound like it's the right answer. It, you know what I mean? It's, it's She's always so it's, composed. It's the it's composed. That's the right She's, word. Exactly just, right. She doesn't yeah. get rattled. She answers. She doesn't. She doesn't get right fired up. She, I mean, and, and she knows what we want. And she even mentioned it a couple of times. She's like, I know this is not what you as media want to do or whatever. And, and she even said, you know, I don't – I'm not – not. I'm, I'm going to paraphrase this. I'm not trolling the, the media websites. I'm not trying to go in there. Like when she said that she happened to be in Vegas for the fight, she was here – She's like, I just, I was training, you know, I was working on whatever, you know, when the things happened with Jones, I wasn't just hitting all the the media sites to figure out whatever. She's like, I was focused on whatever. And she said, right. uh, so, I mean, she was just very, very focused, but gave great answers. It was a good, good interview. And we have the full uh, 
archive of that on uh, the Junkie YouTube. So if you guys haven't seen the interview, feel free to pop up on there and, and check that. But, um, yeah, she's – there's something about especially boxers or anybody that's been in front, you know, even Olympians, um, people that have been in the spotlight at such a high level just have a great way about them. Mm -hmm. She's so composed. She's so – just on it that it, it's fun it's fun listening it's very very professional very yep. very professional and you know it's like pulling teeth because if you're a media person out there it's like oh give me that give me that line that i right. can put as whatever you know holly is probably not going to give it to you she's going to give you a great answer that's you know to the point but she's not going to give you that you know i'm gonna smash their face and and poop down their throat type <laughs> response you know you're not going to get you're that definitely threat. not going to get that one <laughs> definitely not get that one <laughs> Well, you know, as I was – I actually had a few days off. It was nice. You know, we had such a, a crazy stretch. Uh, Dan was nice enough to give me a handful of days off. Sorry, Jason in Arizona, if that offends you that I was tired and <laughs> needed a few days off. Uh, but I had a few days off. But I did a story that I was I, – I, that uh, will come out today as this is released on Friday. It was supposed to be in the paper or was hoping it would be in the paper. I think it got cut, unfortunately. Um, so I think it might end up just being online. But I had a chance to speak with Francis Naganu. And uh, I really think it's a, a, an interesting story, and I hope people get a chance to check it out. The title of the story on MMA Junkie is From Homeless to UFC Contender, UFC on Fox 20's Francis Nagano Recounts His Journey. Um, listen, I, I, I'm as impressed with the physical tools that Francis Nagano has in the heavyweight division as, as I think anybody is. I think the guy really ha it looks like, you know, if he can put it together, um, he can be a force in that division. You know, I'm not saying he could go be a contender right now, um, but I think he definitely has the the raw ability to, to, to do something. And I thought against uh, against Curtis Blades in his last fight out in Croatia, I thought his takedown defense um, was a lot more impressive than I expected it to be. And so I, I think the guy has some real potential. But what intrigued me more was I had a chance to talk to his manager, Fernand Lopez, uh, who we've kind of developed a relationship with over the trips to Europe and some of his trips here representing the French fighters. And uh, you and I were there, I think, in, in the in the hotel in, in Zagreb where he kind of shared a little bit of the story uh, about Francis Nagano's background. And uh, Francis did not have it easy, man. He grew up in Cameroon. I did find out in my research to the story that uh, Cameroon, the, the average income, per, uh, annual income per person is 1300 U.S. dollars. Wow. Annually. Uh, so he decided to make his way to uh, France. Uh, in hopes of a better life. He, he actually wanted to be a professional boxer was his dream, but he wasn't sure what it would be. But he's like, just, just got to find something. Um, and uh, ended up being homeless for a while in, in Paris. Found his way into the gym, and uh, it, kind of the rest is history. And, and hopefully people get a chance to to, uh, to check out the story because I was uh, I enjoyed writing it. And, and, and I wish – I, I wish I would have known it wasn't going to be in the paper because I could have gone longer on the story. I was trying to kind of trim it down a little bit for the paper and hope that we'd get it in. But uh, I hope people will check it out. And, and I'm really looking forward to his fight because he's fighting on the main card, network television. As you know, the UFC is always looking for heavyweights. Uh, and I think this could be a chance for him to make a statement. But I wanted to play a little bit of audio here because we had about a 30-minute interview. And uh, it was in French. He, he speaks French. And uh, Fernand was the go-between between between the two of us. And we were going back and forth, and you know how it is when you're working through a translator. Like, you're pretty sure it's a good translation, but maybe there's something missing. Maybe the question's not communicated just right, whatever. So I was a little worried about that. And then at the end of the call, we get this. Uh, he doesn't have some to give some opportunity for some children like me who, who dream the, the sport and not have an opportunity like me. Oh, okay. And to oh. Give them something different. Did, did you understand what he just said? Hell yes, he speaks English. <laughs> uh, yeah, he can. This is he can speak. He just sometimes um, if you emphasize, he, he may not understand what you're saying, but he he, he can speak. <laughs> and uh, that's that's his goal. I mean, he's just to, to he, he missed. The, he didn't have the chance as a child to have those opportunities, and now. It's always about that. Like, I'm from Cameroon. He's from Cameroon. But he's more thinking about helping guys there than me. Like, sometimes we will say, Coach, look, let's do this for Cameroonian guys, for the children, for this. And that's why I mentioned you that he's a lot of intuitive stuff, a lot of things. Like, uh, you know. Even, even the last time when I go to Cameroon, I bring a lot of uh, materials for, for boxing. 
to to open the gym and now i just follow about some some big uh, some big uh, space to to start the yeah. gym yeah he just he uh, just found out the the a big place some chemicals. he's coming back from vacation uh, actually and um before starting that camp and uh when he went there he did a lot of like stuff a lot of stuff you know like uh, equipment like gears gloves pad, boxing i mean everything that he could have uh to to bring to for the homeless guy who need to have uh, boxing stuff there and um and he just found a place, he just, uh, I mean, he just told me that he just found a place there to build a gym to go A lot of children now in Cameroon, uh, because of me, they, are, they have a lot of dream. The dream will be, they say, I will be the champion, I will do MMA, I will do boxing like Francis, because they, they saw me when I'm young. Many people, they saw me when I'm young. I am, I am not have anything any opportunity and today they are so me far and they are they are, they are, they are dreaming they are, they are thinking that something is possible even when you are so poor something is possible in the life it's when i want to to bring it at the children uh, at the child uh, you know it's not easy it's so hard but it's possible yes that's right folks francis nagano speaks english Damn it, I wish I would have known that at the start of the interview. But uh, I really enjoyed talking to him, man. I think this is a, a, a chance to be um, kind of a breakout star for the UFC. I think the guy, like I said, has all the physical tools. Um, if he can continue to develop his wrestling, of course, I think it's going to be a big part of it. But his striking is downright scary. So uh, I'm looking forward to his fight. All right, listen, we're, as we said, we're not in Chicago. We're enjoying all the warmth here in Las Vegas. But we do have a nice run coming up, Cold Coffee. We're going to be uh, in Atlanta next week. Uh, I think we do Salt Lake City after that. Uh, and then, man, we start getting international. So uh, we're going to get back on the road. And, you know, Cold Coffee, who had been uh, tucked away in the background for a while <laughs> while I was out trying to bang my new co-host, Simon Head, and Dan Stupp. Uh, and, and Mike Bond. And Mike Bond as well. I th Mike actually, Bond. I, I did get a chance to consummate that one. I didn't want to tell anybody. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and break it on the air now. Um no, but uh, so you'll be back in the mix. So it should be should be fun to uh, to get the to get the band back together. That's right. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to being back on the road. All right, USC Fight Night at 91 in Sioux Falls. Now I know you got caught up on USC 200 and it, and it wasn't so great. Did you get a chance to watch USC Fight Night 91 from Sioux Falls as well? Because that one did end up being a fun event. And and I gotta say, you know, of course John Lineker was the one that came out. Uh, with a big statement there. I mean, Lineker is a legit title contender in the Bantamweight division, but I'm not going to lie. I'm still buzzing over that fight between Lando Venata and, and Tony Ferguson as well. Did you get a chance to catch any of that action? I did not as much as I wanted to because I was kind of at that time I'd got back home and was grilling, which I love to do. Well, we had some, uh, Irish, some of our Irish friends were still in town, so I was kind of doing that at the same time. But I did catch those two fights. And I remember the Ferguson when I was, like, trying to grill and I was, like, trying to watch at the same time and I was like I felt like every time I turn my back I'd hear them go ooh oh you can't was, grill was during like, a Tony Ferguson fight. Well now fight. I know that for sure, you know. <laughs> and 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 Lando Calrissian was awesome. <laughs> you know, I thought ever since <laughs> ever since Star Wars I wonder where he uh, went and now I know he is a bad ass MMA fighter now. Um but no that I thought that was a great fight. I mean I kudos to to Lando. I mean I I'll be honest, I had no clue who this kid was. And then after that fight, I was like, wow, if he's going to come in and do that, he made Tony look like Tony was having a bad day. And Tony looks, he's always had a way of just sort of just rising to the occasion the last couple times. So I don't doubt Tony ever anymore. You know, when he goes in their fight, you know, he's he's the cat that I'm just like, all right, he's going to pull something out, you know. He's just been so sharp, focused or whatnot. So I didn't know what to expect. But, um, you know, I was really, really impressed and – um, not to skip to that, to just go to the main event. But, I, you know, it's funny when everybody in the room was kind of having their pick. Oh, I'm McDonald. I'm McDonald. I'm like, man, Lineker, so tough. And I was like, I don't know. I'm torn either way, you know. And then finally at the end, I just said, you know, kind of was like, I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure I'm on the fence. But heck with it. I'm going Lineker. And then when you saw those two go in there and do exactly what Lineker likes to do, which is just 
I'm just going to tuck my head down a little bit, and I'm swinging. I'm tucking my head and swinging. And then he, when he was catching, like, I mean, I love the, the meme that somebody put together, actually, that had, like, the actually – big granite slabs that were on his fist. I don't know if you saw it. It went around on uh, Twitter or whatever. You know, it was 100% true. After watching that, he was dropping bombs. I thought that was a great fight. It was. So those are about the two main ones that I saw. Everything else outside of that, I was, I think, transiting from the gig that I was doing during the day and then coming back to do whatever. So I kind of missed most of the other ones. But those are the two ones that I think those are, even though I hear the prelims were awesome as well. It was great. No, it was a great night. Let Lando Calrissian was Billy D. Williams, right? That's yes. Right. Okay. All right. Colt forty five of Colt forty five fame. <laughs> <laughs> One of the greatest mustaches. Dropping of my all Star time. Wars knowledge there. I was like <laughs> when you first said it, I was like, who the hell is that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was making sure I had the right guy. Well, I was gonna try to say, you know, I, we hadn't seen him since he lost whatever the place was where they they uh where he was acting as the sort of agent for the bad guys when the bad guys were there and the, they end up taking Han Solo and freezing him there. It was like Sky City or Sky something or other. I don't know. I'm sure it's one of like our listeners. It's like you're talking about a versed. fictional universe. <laughs> it's like this <laughs> made up place, you know. But uh, yeah, uh, Lando was the shit. He had a great voice, man. What a great voice. He was so smooth. Oh no, so smooth. It's four billion dollar Star Wars, four billion dollar UFC. Well, listen. Uh, on the heels of that, because Which I was still buzzing about Lando. Four billion. Would you take Star Wars or would you take the UFC? That's a good question. Well, I'd take the UFC. Would you? Yeah, because you own, like, live event. I mean, don't get me wrong. Star Wars is going to be profitable forever, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure they're still making sequels. and they got to pay out They're a lot building, like, UFC. a Star Wars land at Disneyland yeah. or whatever right now. So, like, I'm sure it's just going to keep making I'm money. I'm such but a sci-fi geek. I'd probably take the Star Wars. You would, wouldn't I you? I probably would. I, I'd take the USC just because, like, you'd keep – you're right. There's a lot of expenses with the USC too, though, but you're owning a, a property that's, like, growing, still growing. It can growing, get more and more and so, more. Yeah. Well, Star Wars can get more and more. They just reboot that shit after a while, that's right? That's true. Isn't that Star what they do with Wars all movies? 37 or whatever. <laughs> well, listen – uh <laughs> as gripping as our Star Wars discussion <laughs> is, uh, I <laughs> I was still buzzing about that fight. And what I want to do this week, I thought, you know what? Let me check in with our good buddy Michael Chiesa, who was in such a tough position. Um, you know, wanted that main event so bad. I'm not going to lie. I was looking forward to that main event so much. Lando Venata and Tony Ferguson delivered. So, I, you know, no no loss there. But I was, I was excited to see Chiesa in a main event. And I thought Chiesa Ferguson was just going to be an incredible fight. Uh, so I thought I'd check in with him and just kind of get caught up with him, see how his recovery was going. Uh, at one point in the interview, he's actually he actually gets stopped by somebody to give him some well wishes. Uh, and, I, awesome. and I figured, yeah, let's just have that as part of the interview. So, uh, hey, after an incredible UFC Fight 991, I thought, let's check in with Michael Chiesa. <laughs> Are you? Hey, John. Will you hold on for one sec? Of course, man. No worries. Hold on. Oh, yeah. What up, J-Mo? That's some high-class uh, ring music you got there, man. Dude, I know. I need to get rid of it. <laughs> no, I ain't that classy. <laughs> That's still a good time for you, man? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're good. I just had to get my headset in. Okay. No worries. Well, hey, man, I just wanted to get, get caught up with you, man. Obviously, the, the main event that we were looking forward to you uh, just passed. So I wanted to get caught up with you and just find out how, how the back's doing, man, How what, what's going on and what, what, what the process is for you right now. You know, right now it's just a lot of rest and physical therapy. Um, you know, it's pretty tedious. It's, uh, this is the first time in my career that I've ever had to take time off for an injury. So, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to – Stay positive and uh, stay within the guidelines of you know what my trainers got me doing. And uh, you know, uh, and the bonus part about it is I talked to the UFC today, and we're uh, we're gonna work out a good time to send me down to Exos in Arizona here in August, and uh, hopefully that'll be a good time frame. When not only will I be down there doing physical therapy, but I'll also be starting to hopefully work out again. Wow. Okay. So luckily, no surgery or anything like that. It's basically just you got to rest and rehab it. Uh, I'm not necessarily out of the water with that yet. Um, you know, we we if, if things don't go good in the next four weeks, we're gonna do a re reval and uh, you know, and, and that's something that my physical trainer brought up to me just recently. 
And I could tell when she said it that it was like uh, bringing it up and maybe it was kind of on the table. So I really don't know. I'm just trying to like said, stay positive. We're definitely making progress, but you know, I'm definitely not out of the water on this thing yet. Wow, man, I hate to hear that. Well, uh, I mean, did you? I, I gotta ask, did you did you watch the Tony Ferguson fight the other night? And if so, w- what'd you think about it? Uh, no, I didn't watch it. Um, not that I'm that bitter or anything, but I just you know, that, that was a tough pill for me to swallow, man. And, uh, you know, I definitely my Twitter blew up the night of the fight, and uh, a lot of people thought, you know, I would have had I would have had in the bag, and I'm back, and you know, I, I watched the uh, the highlights. And, you know, Tony's tough as hell, no doubt about that. And, you know, he deserves his spot at number three in the world. But, you know, I really don't think he was able to get out of, out of the odds. I don't think he would have fought that way. I think that he left that guy a lot of opportunities that, that he didn't capitalize on. You know, I like, so many times I could have caught that net. And just got to but, you know, it's, uh, I don't know there. I just got to stay positive. But, yeah, I didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I kind of I thought it would be like the, uh, you know, the Daniel Cormier watching John Jones fight kind of thing where you're like, damn, if I could have had him on that night, I definitely would have had that guy. Yeah, you know, and that kid's tough, dude. There's no doubt about him. I mean, he's an RFA champ, well-trained. You know, he's tough as shit. You know, he, he, is, he definitely made, he made a great impression, not only the UFC, but the fans. You know, so I'm, it's not like Tony fought his whole fan. That's not what I was trying to get at at all. I just think that to the level that I'm at and my skills, I mean, if he would have fought that way again, he would have not went well at all. And that's my damn fifty thousand dollar bonus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So I, you know, I was going to ask you kind of where you thought you you fit back in the division, and and uh, you know, kind of what what made sense. But I guess right now it's it's just too early to even really start speculating. Yeah, you know, and it, there's a lot of big matchups coming up in the division. You know. We'll see what happens with Khabib when he comes back. Uh, you know, he's got Johnson and Poirier. You know, they're going to be strapping it up uh, down in Texas. Same guy as my big brother, Samuel. Um, you know, but I, I'm not, there's no way I'm going to lose my game. I'm not worried about that at all. Like, I, you know, I've watched the number seven guy off in the second round. You know, I've shown I'm dangerous. I've shown that I deserve to be where I'm at. So, you know, I'm not going to be out so long that I'm just going to get forgotten about. You know, I, I most definitely, 100%, I will fight for the game here. Back to the rear now. We talked about the surgery, and it's not like they got to go in and use this. It's, again, because that disc is ruptured right now on the right side. No longer on my back. We have to go in and clean it up. It's sort of like a meniscus surgery. Okay. But that's still your spine. There's <laughs> a, a big difference between knee surgery and back surgery. You know what I mean? I just wanted to tell my son that I met you because. I'm a guy, I'm the manager, I oversee the site and stuff, but he's into the UFC stuff. And sorry to hear about your back. I know, we, uh, I'll take a shift. I know we were hoping to watch uh, down in Dakota here, but you going to be all right? Yeah, I'm good. Are you going to be fighting pretty soon again? Oh, yeah. All right, have a good day. Did you see yourself a new car? Sorry, you <laughs> Getting the love. Right, I'm getting the love. Yeah, I'm getting the love while I'm at the, the transfer station. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny well I guess uh, last question I got for you man I mean what so what's kind of the magic date right now I know you said you're st- there's still a little gray area right now so w- when are we going to know more about kind of what the future holds you know really realistically so I don't let myself down if it, if it takes longer um, you know I'm shooting for I'm shooting for October maybe November I really want to when they give, give me the green light to go back to training I'm not just going to go jump right into camp. You know, I'll, I want to go back down to Vegas. I want to train with John Wood while I'm not in a camp. While I really have, don't have to train for a specific guy. I can just focus on my skill set. Because, you know, at this point, you know, I'm in the top nine, top ten. I'm going to be fighting the best guys in the world. And I have things I need to work on, you know. So, I, uh, fortunately for me, I'm able to, you know, I don't live a very big ball in lifestyle. So, I got enough money set aside to where I can take my time to get back in there and make sure well prepared i'm well healed and uh you know maybe hopefully squeeze in a little commentating with venator fc you know <laughs> see what happens but uh you know uh, i'll be back in there before the year's over you can count on that and and then pretty soon we'll be talking about when i'm going to be getting my title shot i mean i'm right there i'm only a couple wins away i think in my my road to i look at a lot of these guys and i'm not trying to disrespect them but it's like i mean look at my last three fights you know what i mean i beat a guy that beat a top 10 guy Plucked off 14, took out number seven, 
like, you know, if I keep just, I need two more, two more wins to get a title shot. If I just keep going up the rankings and fighting guys higher ranked than me, I can't be denied. You know what I mean? That's it, man. That's it. All right, brother. We're well, always good catching up, man. If you do make it out to Vegas, of course, let me know, and we'll uh, we'll definitely do it. Any other any other thoughts, messages, anything like that that we can get out there for you? You know, I just uh, like send best luck to you know my teammate Samuel. Who's got his fight coming up uh, September seventeenth in Texas. Liz has got Raquel Pennington. Um, you know, August twentieth at two o two. So a couple big fights to, to watch out for. I want to send my love to my teammates, my coach Rick Little, and. Uh, my amazing manager, Daniel Rubio Rubenstein, <laughs> out there hustling, doing a phenomenal job. He's the man, and uh, yeah, that's about it. And I love my mom. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, brother. All right, man. Well, uh, best of luck to you, man. Hopefully it all heals up, and like you said, we're talking again soon. See you. Talk to you soon, John. See you, brother. All right, so Michael Chiesa, not quite out of the woods yet. Sounds like he won't have to have surgery if things go well, but he may have to have some surgery on that back. Uh, man, you know, seeing that guy's rise through the UFC and knowing, you know, how great he's looked and what it appears to have in front of him, I just, I, I for one, hope that uh, there aren't serious problems there because, man, you just you think about a professional athlete and kind of lingering back issues, and you just keep your fingers crossed for Chiesa that that's not going to be an issue because uh, – He's a good dude, man. I'm good not gonna dude. lie. He's a good dude. Had a chance to uh, had a chance to do you know commentary with him in Venator, and you know it just kind of followed him since his tough days, and was part of that crazy tough live cast. And uh, guy just keeps getting better and better. And I hope yeah. I hope it's not a continued issue. Yeah, and you guys got props, man. I'm a lot of people coming out of the woodworks when you guys did the the color commentary. Yeah. They said Mike did a really good he job. He did, so man. Good for him. He's got a, he's got a so maybe he's got a uh, a little pathway. You know, after this as well. I used to do one of us, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no bitter feelings there. No Not bitter, bitter feelings. at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, we talked about the UFC sale. Uh, I, I did want to touch base with you real quick. Um, I, I, anything new out there? Because I feel like right now, I feel like after the big, you know, explosion of news, I kind of feel like we're in this, like, holding pattern almost. You know what I mean? Like, we know there's new or no owners coming in, but they're not actually, like, making any calls yet or doing anything yet. I I kind of feel like we're, we're we're in just a little bit of a holding pattern. I know you still have a lot of uh, a lot of friends and uh, professional acquaintances uh, over at that uh, Sahara office. So um, I don't know anything anything you're hearing. No, everything from my what I've heard it, it's you know most of them don't even feel like it's happened. You know, you know, my granted, you know, like you sort of mentioned earlier, you know, maybe the the final passage of money hasn't happened. A lot of things really haven't shaken up. But for the most part, it's just business as usual. You know they, you know they're have they're not having any meetings to, to give updates and anything like that. I don't think they probably will until, you know maybe somebody exits or somebody leaves or maybe when you know it's, Lorenzo's goodbye party or whatever sort right. of deal. You know, oh, that's for the most be part, a party. that that will be a party probably, or it'll be one of those other events like they had when they had the announcement. You know where they're trying to make everybody feel sad about it and, you know like oh you know like it was a big giant pity party or whatever I guess and. That was a little surprising or whatever. But, you know, he's still there, so he's still the boss, you know. I mean, even though a lot of people were like, oh, it was really somber. And, you know, it was like, oh, wishing him well and thought it was going to be all this and that. And I'm like, but you never really saw Lorenzo around the office, you know. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm like, you guys are such kiss-asses. Be like, kiss bro, asses. are you going to be okay with this $1.7 <laughs> in your pocket I mean, as you, you leave? You good? You good, bro? Bro. You good? The, the, hey. The door's always open, <laughs> the man. Always, the door's you come always back. You open. Come back and, you know, uh, you cry on my shoulder if you're upset. <laughs> you know, but no, for the most part, you know, they're they're treating it business as usual. I mean, you know, with this schedule, I mean, it's nonstop. The grind just doesn't stop. So these guys are, you know, uh, you know, they're they're at their desks. They're they're grinding away, you know, and until somebody says, hey, guys, we have a, a meeting in the whatever boardroom, you know, we're going to have a whatever, a company-wide meeting or whatever. They just don't know. They're just going forward and doing whatever. So I think until something else major happens or maybe, you know, when it's all said and done and Lorenzo's gone or whatever, then maybe as changes come. But at this point, I don't, I don't see any initial changes 
at least it'll happen and, and they don't see anything, you know, because at least nothing's getting passed down to them. So. I feel like it's going to be a while before fans see a real difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't even know what that difference is going to be. I, I still think people aren't. The fans might not even. The fighters might be the first person to see that True. because they might, they might come in this board or whoever come in and start making some sweeping changes that the fighters might be the first people to say, hey, by the way, I was just contacted and was told this, 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 maybe revisiting. They might even go through and revisit contracts. I mean, who knows what, you know, what could it take place because they might come back and say, hey, well, you know, you know, let's just revisit and make sure, you know, one, they might decide that they don't want to keep a, such a big roster. You know, they might go through and, and figure some ways out, maybe buy some guys out just to be gone with them or whatever. Who knows? There's there's a, a ton of things. So that's my guess is that, you know, outside of maybe some of the, the higher-up employees maybe making some exits and finding out whatever, you know, you never know. Maybe the, maybe the fighters I – because mean, I don't think the product's going to change. The, it, we're not going to see anything drastic. If anything else, we might get word saying, like, they, they, they want to make a big push to – Europe or to Asia or maybe make that a focus. What if they came in and said, hey, internationals, maybe that's not our big thing. Maybe we want to focus on the U.S. And that yeah. could, you know, they might pull I mean, back. I definitely we don't see no that idea. happen because here's the thing that I don't think people realize sometimes. We are lucky enough that we, you know, we travel around the world and see these things. Like every single market that shows USC programming is paying for it. They don't give away programming yeah. anywhere. So that's a new licensing deal every single country in the world, man. I mean, as, as I'm sure you saw during your time there, I mean, this has gone beyond a fight company. It's a, it's a media company yeah. now. That's, they're in the business of creating media to distribute to all these different television stations around, around the world. It just happens to be media based around fights. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I know at the core of it, you know, your Dana, your, your, your Joel, your Sean, they got to they gotta make fights. But everybody else around them is making stuff that really doesn't have to do with fights. It has to do with media. Yeah. It's true. And that's why I think Global will continue to be a driving force for them because I think that's probably where their biggest opportunities are. Yeah. It sucks that most of the staffers never saw any of that money of all these deals. <laughs> but, you know. I can't imagine, like, if you're working there, you wouldn't be a little bit bitter. Like, you hear $4 billion. And not I mean, that's, oh, yeah. that's fighters I mean, to anybody. Got, they, I think people were bitter when even when the Fox money came in, you know, and they were promising $107 million I mean, you can't hate. Year. You're, not the one that, you're not the one that invested – Two million to buy, yeah. went forty-four million in the hole. Continues to lay out money, so it's like it's not like you couldn't. I mean, you could have done that if you had two million. You know what I yeah, mean? So it's true. you can't get mad, but at the same time, I can't, I can't imagine it be. Well, a little I can imagine bigger. when you know you work your ass off and you're getting a one percent increase at the end of the year, and then there's some people are getting half percents, and then they're trying to say whatever, and but then they're saying they're having a record year and they're made six hundred million. This is all hypothetical. Hypothetical. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetical, you know, n not purely. You're saying you could imagine yourself I can imagine. in such a position, <laughs> in such a position where you would feel such a way. Yeah. So, hypothetically. <laughs> All right. Well, I know you've been a busy man. <laughs> Moving on. <coughs> Moving on. Uh, did you see the Jose Aldo stuff? Because I wanted to ask you about this. Uh, our own Fernando Prachis was part of a media day in, in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Guillermo Cruz from MMA Fighting was there. It's not like we were the only ones. I mean, the story got out there everywhere. Uh, Jose Aldo comes out and says that he had a spy in Frankie Edgar's training room during the week of UFC 200. Uh, and he kind of threw it out there, and, and everybody said, are, are you serious? You actually have a spy there? And he said, yeah, of course I have a spy. He's like, we do it every time we come in town. We, we, we find out who's in the other, other locker room, the other workout room, because as you know from mm -hmm. plenty of experience, there's two workout rooms, red corner, yeah. blue corner. We look who's on there. We look who the licensed cornerman. We find a Brazilian. And we say, tell us anything you see in that workout room and help us know. And he said, you know, we, we saw what Frankie was working on. We knew we had to make adjustments. That's why I didn't throw very many kicks. Of course, we write a story. Everybody writes a story. That was a big story. Today, or yesterday when this podcast comes out, he says, I was just kidding. You guys took me serious. Come on, yeah. man. Don't blow it up. I don't know, man. It was a pretty convincing story. And it did kind of make me think. I hadn't really thought about it before, but, like, you know, those those workout rooms, it's very clearly marked, fighters and camps only, no media in there, no visitors. And, of course, if somebody's teammate or something was in there, you'd, you'd be like, hey, because I've seen that before where, yeah. where, where fighters will walk into a room and see that a teammate of their opponent is in there, and they're like, no, nah, I'm out, I'll come back later. But, man, it did make me think, like, A, is, is Jose Aldo serious, what do you think, and B – 
you know, you think maybe there's a little bit of that going on where it's like, hey, if you can watch my guy and see what he's working on, let's let's see. Yeah, it's it it is quite possible. I know a lot of time from what I saw, um, over times a lot of times you wouldn't have too many camps in there at one time. A lot of these guys, they go in, they do their work, they'd hit mitts or whatever. They weren't showing too much strategy, too much whatever. In there, I, I you that's know, true. You used to have access in there while you. Yeah, were, I mean, I used to see it. I mean, so you would see sometimes. Been the I've been doors. behind the curtain. <laughs> um, you know, and a lot of these guys would go in there. You could see groups of people, but you know, then at that point, these are small rooms a lot of times. So you're not going to see a crazy full blown workout because you might be only stuck in this little corner if you got somebody else over there hitting mitts or doing whatever over there. And I think a lot of these guys aren't doing crazy strategy That's or whatever. True. A lot if of them are just going and getting a sweat on. They're just getting to cut a sweat rounds. on. They're doing whatever. I don't think they were doing anything that would be a game changer, anything that you would think he wouldn't. Because he's not going to do that. If, if but there I know were you've been a part of room. sessions, too, where people are working on stuff, and they're like, don't show video where he works on the sure. left hand, or don't show video where he works on this transition. I know you've heard that. But a lot of that, too, that. has been sometimes, but it's been in a place where it's just them. Or it's in their True. gym. True. You know, it's usually not in a room where it's like, um, I mean, it does happen. Uh, but a lot of times it's, it's, it's in a room, it's just them. Or it's at their gym or whatever. You know, if there's another person, that, and, and most of these guys, they're smart enough to know if somebody's, you know, if there's a Brazilian in the room, I guarantee Frankie and them were not doing something that was like, all right, hey, I just came up with this last minute combo, you know, <laughs> that I think is going to work. And then the guy was like, hmm, you know. So Aldo said it was it all boiled down to, if you remember Conor McGregor back at USC 194 in one of the embedded episodes, said he had a spy in Aldo's camp. Yeah. And Aldo says it was just kind of a, a play, a little jab at Conor. So is that so? Do you buy it, his his story be. today that he's joking around, or do, you, or do you? I mean, I think if anything, I mean, it might have been funnier. It, Brazilians, I think, from what I've seen, one, this was a, a Brazilian speaking to Brazilian media, so it could have been two different things. He could have been saying something that he thought would never see the light in English-speaking population, right? Or Pay also, to the too, mic flags, bro. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, can he read English? Can he read MMA Junkie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. I just wonder. If I find out you edited this out, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> um, or it could have just been the matter of maybe, you know, a lot of times I think in some Brazilian, the co uh, they want to show uh, maybe a false sense of bravado. So maybe them, it was a way of him saying like, oh yeah, well, you know, people have done that past. Well, psh, I got spies too. Right. I had spies watching. I can see that. Yeah. And it might have just been nothing more than just him sort of just posturing and just saying whatever. Um, Regardless, I think fight week, you're not going to see these. You know, nobody's going to be in there working for the most part if there's other people in the room on something crazy, secret, or whatever. That's true. Most of them are, you know, they're going to be that. in there sweating. They're going to do whatever. Thank you for giving me some common sense. You you're know, right about that. I don't think he was going to be doing anything that was crazy or whatever. I mean, or they would have they would have already worked on it. They would have whatever. I mean, you're right. it's an open room. You know, I would think anybody going in there would have the mind that if somebody else is in the room, let's not work on something that's going to get out. Right. And and Frankie's a champ. He's a whatever. I mean, he's not gonna he's not gonna do something stupid and right. and and give away the game plan at the end moment or whatever. Damn I think it was probably just. Sense. I think Jose, Jose, it was just probably just trying to to sound bigger and better in to in front of a bunch of Brazilians, and then we had some of the audio and he had fighting there and us there. And, and it got sent back over here, and we take it literally. Right. So when he says he was probably joking, he probably was. And even if he wasn't. I hate you, cold coffee. I'm sure there was nothing that he saw that was, like, game-changing. I really believe it. <laughs> Who knows? I mean. Damn it. All right, well, listen, I wanted to start looking forward to next week. Even though we got USC on Fox 20 this weekend, I want to start looking ahead next week. Next weekend is huge. Invicta, uh, Matt Erickson's going to be heading his way out there. We've got an RFA event, USC 201. Me and you will be covering that. World Series of Fighting 32, all of that is next weekend. So an insane uh, next weekend. So oh, what? you have to catch up. Speaking of uh, World Series of Fighting, Ray Sefo was there at that uh, Top Spin Charity ping pong thing that uh, Chris Paul was doing at the uh, Palazzo. Oh, you were shooting today? Yeah, so you'll have to ask him. you have to touch base with him tomorrow and see how he did. I think there was a possibility that he was going to be competing in it. He was a little worried about it because he's like, I'm not really whatever, but he kind of – put his game face and I think Ray Sefo if he was across the table from me putting some like K1 I'm gonna crush your face like look at me I would probably he's gonna be on MMA Junkie Radio in the morning so, we'll have to tip him off yeah. that he was there and let yeah. him know
Well, speaking of World Series of Fighting, I wanted to – I was kind of looking at the cards and saying, hey, who, you know, we're going to cover UFC 201, so we'll talk to all those people next week. But I was like, is there anybody here I want to talk to? And I picked Phil Hawes because <laughs> Phil Hawes, we met at episode one of the MMA Roadshow. If you remember, we were down at the Black Zillions at the time, and basically yep. we showed up for practice, and we were like, who is this animal right here? Yeah. Because he's a scary guy. Yeah, who is this large, scary man that is throwing everybody around yeah, the room? Nobody right seemed now? to wanted to, yeah. to hit with Oh him. no, no. <laughs> I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna go stretch over here in the corner. <laughs> That's what I would have done he just nonstop. Kept Even though I was everybody hitting partner with somebody. up and yeah. everybody's like, no, nobody make eye contact. Stretch. Don't stretch. make eye contact. <laughs> Gotta stretch. <laughs> well, he made his World Series of Fighting debut last month. He's already back in action. He's taking a huge step up in competition uh, at World Series of Fighting 32. And I thought, hey. Uh, let's catch up with Phil Hawes because uh, we, we met him at episode one. I feel like that bond. I feel like that bond is there. So I thought, what a good time to catch up with him ahead of his second World Series of Fighting performance. Hey, what's up, buddy? Not much, man. Sorry about that. Will it still work for you? Yeah, 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 for sure. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, man. Uh, I want to go back a little bit, if you don't mind, man. I, you know, I know you may not be the most fun to talk about, but I haven't gotten to talk to you since then. But the Ultimate Fighter. Um, yeah. Man, you know, I remember being at the op at the open tryouts and, and you being in the room, and, and I think everybody just going, well, we know who won this season, you know, and it, it's it's a wrap. We don't even have to talk about it. Uh, and then, of course, you know, a tough fight to get in against against what ultimately proved to be a tough guy, and, and, and you don't make it onto the show. Um, what was that? What was that moment like for you, man? What was that experience like to come up short when I know you probably felt the expectations just like we had? Yeah. Um, at the time, at the time, it was it was tough to deal with, but I believe in my retrospect that uh, he, he did the necessary things to, to win. He competed well that night, and he's a, he's a good fighter. And I, as I watch him move through a tough show, he adapts to every opponent, and that's. That's due to his high IQ. His fight IQ, and my my IQ at the time wasn't as high. So um, so I my head school off to him. He did well, and I wish him nothing but the best. That's obviously the, a positive attitude. Was it tough to deal with at the time, though? I mean, was there any kind of like doubt in your head, like, am I ready for this level, or, or were you able to to get past that pretty quick? Um. Uh, it, I wouldn't say it was a it was a it was a quick turnaround. You know, I don't a quick turnaround mentally. It, it took it took some time for me to to adjust and re reassess my uh myself as a uh, mixed martial artist. But uh, I like I said before in that show, I was still not sure I'm gonna be a champion. And and when you got that champion heart, one one defeat, one loss, you know that's that's nothing. To, you know, it's just a just a little bump in the road. So it, so. Time held on. It held me. So, good to go. Nice. Now, I know you've been out at Jackson's. Are you, are you still training out in Albuquerque? Yeah, I'm still in Albuquerque. Albuquerque is my home. Jackson is my home. Fantastic. How did you end up there? I know when I was when I first was exposed to you, you were, you were down in Florida training uh, with Black Zillions. How did you end up making the switch out to Jackson's? Yeah, I made a, I made a, I made a brief stint in, uh, at Black Zillions. Uh, I originally came here from Jackson to Black Zillions. So I went to Florida and checked out the team. They have an awesome team, but I miss my uh, I miss uh, a few uh, a few people back here in New Mexico. So I came back to New Mexico and came back to Jackson to to keep continuing my career. Very cool. And uh, signed with World Series of Fighting, of course. I guess what what was it about them that were the right organization? I mean, I gotta believe that you know everybody out there was interested in your services. So what was it about World Series that that made that the right place for you? Uh, it was a, it was an easy um it was an easy easy decision. My uh, manager uh, Ali he uh, um he talked to me about it and we sat down and looked at the numbers and the numbers from World Series looked the best. So we go where the money is. <laughs> no doubt. Now they brought you in and and I mean the, what I was to told is that it was hard to get you a fight and I definitely believe that. I know everybody's aware of you as a prospect. So they end up. Pairing you against Joshua Key, um, what was your what was your thought with the matchup? Because I, I got to think that you know it's kind of a tough situation. Because if you don't go in there and, and smoke the guy, then people say it's a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I said it many times before. Uh, what people people's uh, views on me, either negative or positive, really really don't weigh much value in, in to me, my confidence and and my my self worth. So uh, if, if I went in there and I had a fifteen minute war with this guy, then I would have. If I did my best at that performance, I would have took it. I would have accepted it. Um, but. Uh, as the fight turned out, I finished him in, I don't know, a couple minutes or whatever, and uh, I still wasn't happy with the performance. I wish I could have stood up a little more, but um, but uh, what people say about my performance or about my career really doesn't play too much effect on me. I know uh, I have a heart of a champion, and I'm going to be a champion, so, yeah. Nice. Now you're getting back to work. I mean, basically a, a month later. Talk about that decision. I mean, how did that come about? Were you were you pushing to get another fight, or did they come to you with this? How how did it work out that you're getting back to to, to work so quickly? Yeah, my manager Ali. He's, he's a great guy. And before I got to wipe the sweat off my forehead from the cage, he was like, "Hey, we got a fight for you. Do you want to fight?" And I mean, this is literally maybe minutes after I stepped out of the cage, and I was like, "Do you want to fight?" And I said. No brainer, let's do it. He told me the opponent. My coaches agreed. I agreed. So now we're here. A week <laughs> away. We can happen away. That's amazing. So it really did happen, like as you're getting out of the cage. Yeah, yeah. Literally, as I'm in the back change and I get a text from Ali, he's like, hey, we got a fight. You want to fight? I say, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, we'll talk about Lewis Taylor. I mean, uh, you know, obviously a, a much better record than your last opponent. He had an incredible performance his last time out. He's on a little bit of a roll. Um, what do you think about him as you break him down? Uh, I, I don't really see an opponent. I see, I see just someone across the cage with a set of skills. Um, he, he's, a, he's a good fighter. Uh, his record shows that. And I'm not, I'm not really worried about what my opponent does. I'm there to oppose my will and do what I what do my thing, do what I, I do best. What's the trend fight? They don't pay by round. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. You you said it a couple times. You don't you know you don't worry about what other people say about you. I mean, have you felt those those expectations? I mean, has that put like a load on your shoulders? Because you know, people in the know have been calling you a, a top prospect for a long, long time. Has that made it tough for you, or, or, or you know, made it uh, I guess hard for you as you kind of make your way forward? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, there's definitely. I'm really big into uh, sports psychology and the mental aspect of the game, so it took a lot of study and a lot, a lot of reading, a lot of, a lot of work to get where I'm at mentally. And beginning my career when everyone had high expectations, um, I it did take a toll on me, and I think it might have taken a toll on the Ultimate Fighter. But after reassessing myself and uh, studying deeper into psychology, I'm just, uh, I'm getting a better grip of myself and my self confidence and mentally the mental aspect of the game that's awesome so you feel like it's all coming together for you then finally it's time to time to really start making that run yes exactly interesting where, where do you see yourself i mean what is the ultimate goal i mean i, I guess you i don't know if you can keep fighting every month maybe you can maybe you can how do you how do you see your career going forward from this uh i see my career just skyrocketing i feel i feel i feel ready i feel prepared and i feel like i'm gonna be a world champion real soon so we're just gonna keep we'll see the fights and keep knocking them, lining them up, and I'm just keep knocking them down. So do you, I'm, I'm feeling positive. Do you already start matching yourself up with David Branch? I mean, in your head, do you do you already start playing that fight out a little bit? Oh, that's a tough call. That's, that's a tough call. David Branch is uh, one of my friends, and um, I train with him uh, in New York. My brother trains at his school, so I, I can't I can't I can't uh, play that game. I can't. I can't um, match myself up right now because he's a good friend, and but we're both competitors. We know we know what's on stake. We know what's on the line. So, so you're saying that if it ever came down to it and the title shot was there, you'd take the fight, but you don't really want to think about it if you don't have to because you have a respect for him. Uh, along the lines, yeah, you can say that. I would, I would, out of respect, I would call him and see what he said about the fight, or you know, as competitors and as friends, you know, it's the fine line. So. I will call him and we will brainstorm and figure out what needs to happen. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, I'm sure we'll cross that bridge uh, when when we come to it. In the meantime, what do you think we're going to see next weekend? You know, well, like you said, it was a, a quick win for you last time, but you said you kind of uh, weren't necessarily happy with it. What, what do you think we're going to see this time around? 
I, I feel like you guys should be able to be ready to see my best performance. I know I haven't showcased a lot of striking in my prior fight, but I feel I feel I feel my stand up have excelled over this uh, past few weeks, and uh, I can't wait to showcase that. Awesome. I'm to get some people on the air. Yeah. Awesome, man. All right, brother. We're looking forward to it. I appreciate the time. Any other last thoughts, messages, anything like that you want to get out there? No, brother. Thanks for the interview. I appreciate it. All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See you, buddy. So Phil Hawes didn't work out for him at the Ultimate Fighter. It's funny. I remember those open workouts. We showed up. We were like, well, we know who won this season. Yep. I guess we can move on to Tough 24. Uh, but uh, obviously didn't work out for him there. But, uh, you know, kind of admitted he had some tough times, but is focused now and, and feels like he's ready to make a run. And the dude legitimately has incredible physical tools. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see his progression. Yeah. What a what – a, he's a specimen. He's a specimen. Let's but talk about Cyborg Santos real quick. Uh, crazy. Yeah, man. Um, give me your – just kind of what went through your mind because I'll tell you what I thought but just you know we saw the knockout incredible knockout uh, by Michael Benham Page and then the next day we saw the picture posted by Chris Justino his ex-wife uh, showing the, the the photo I mean where you can actually visibly see the indention in his head and then of course showing um, they said x-ray I don't know if it's an I don't I'm not Whatever, maybe it was an X-ray, like one of those 4D X-rays, whatever. But basically, mm -hmm. man, you can see his, see the fractures. His, oh, and stuff. so man, when that when that came out and that was posted, what was what was your initial thoughts? I was just like, what the hell? Maybe go back and actually watch the knee again and just see his reaction when you saw him like sort of crumple on the ground a little bit. Made it so much made more so much more sense after seeing it, but it just looked absolutely god awful. And I was trying to look at the the, the, the X-ray one and trying to match up the the fractures to the the indentedness of oh. his forehead, and it was just. And then, I was just like, I thought that was a career ender. I would think that would be a career ending thing. And he's what talking six months or that's insane. It's nuts. Like I mean, God bless up. you, bro. But I mean, can that heal like that? I, I mean, mean, I think it, I guess at the end of the day, it's just a broken bone, right? I mean, as long as there's nothing wrong with the brain, one of the it's worst just a broken bone. Yeah. the one that's like, what, cognizant well, function? Here's the, here's the thing. To me, to me, what that was to me is, and it happens every now and then, man. Um, I, 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 I've said it multiple times, but I, I remember the sound that it made uh, when, when um, Dong Young Kim uh, knocked out John Hathaway, where I briefly thought he was dead. Um, and, and I wasn't the only one on press row who thought that just because the sound was so sickening. Um, there are moments where you get reminded of what this sport is and what can happen. I mean, you know, we're sitting here in Buffalo Wild Wings at Warren Springs in Durango, kicking back a few frosty beverages, having fun, talking about a sport that we love, uh, you know, a sport that we work in, of course, but that we both enjoy as well. Um, and it is a sport and it is entertainment. But, you know, it's so easy to get caught up sometimes in, you know, being snarky and talking shit and, you know, this guy sucks and da 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 and that I think you have to remember, like, have respect for when these people step in the cage because yeah. legit real shit can happen. Yeah. I mean, definitely a big reminder. I mean, I, I mean, we, we talked about before when we – the Dada 5000 fight against mm -hmm. Kimbo, you know, almost – feeling like we watched somebody die in front of us, you know, in a sense. And, you know, Grant, I wasn't here for this one, but just seeing it, you know, um, true kudos to his spirit to want to get back in there and, and fight and do all other kind of stuff. I mean, but this is – that was just one of those things. That, I mean, after seeing that, yeah, you just kind of like, wow, it's not – doesn't feel as much a spectator fun sport anymore. You know, yeah. you're, you're, you realize the realness of it. And if it was in a different situation – you know, luckily these guys were two guys going in there with the, the willingness, I'm going to fight you, you're going to fight me. You know, this is the kind of stuff that you would see out on the street somewhere and you would think like, oh, my gosh, this guy got must have got jumped. He's almost two, you know, two inches away from death or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. And they did this for sport, you know, and, and it's uh, it was just one of those things. I mean, we've seen broken bones. We've seen other things. I think just that picture, I mean, I can't, I can't get it out of my head. It just didn't seem uh, – 
wasn't fun. Like seeing it, like I, I don't know what my initial reaction. I, it, it didn't. I definitely didn't have the feeling of, oh man, that was like the coolest kick ever. Right. That was like so awesome. It was more like, holy cow. I mean, is this guy ever gonna fight again? I mean, is when he you see to, a professional you know, fighter writhing on the ground in pain, yeah. like. I always one of the one of the ones I remember that always sticks out to me was when Jose Aldo knocked out Cub Swanson. He ended up shattering uh, his orbital mm -hmm. and shattering his cheekbone with that double leaping knee. When 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 Cub hit the ground, like I mean the way he covered up, it, you you could tell something was seriously wrong. Because professional fighters they're used to getting hit all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? When they have that type of reaction, something is wrong. Yeah. You it's know? tough to watch. It's tough to watch, and you know. Ugh. Just seeing them, like, you know, not that you would ever want to tell a guy, like, hey, hang it up or whatever. Sometimes you almost, somebody needs to be the the bigger person for them and say, hey, you know, for your health, I, I would recommend that you don't do this anymore. At least give it longer than six months. Man. At least I would, longer I would than think you'd want your skull to have more time to Yeah, I mean, up. somebody I was with tried to look up all the different functions, and I would butcher them all and, and say them all wrong anyways. But, ah, you know, the, the, <laughs> 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 but that area, there's a lot of major stuff that happens. I mean, but I, I also do hear that that is one of the tougher parts of your head, you know, right there in the front. That's why dudes are always kind of head button, but I think that's up a little bit more than the area where it actually right. caved it in. It's slightly above that area where it's more reinforced, but um, it's just, it was tough to see. It, you know, it was, uh, I definitely got no pleasure out of seeing it. You know, I thought it was uh, kudos to to Michael Venom Page, another instance of him being extremely exciting and devastating in his power and what he was able to do with his precision, but in the same sense, I was just like, my goodness, you know, that's this is not one of the fun things. It's how do I explain this to the um, the casual fan or someone that comes up to me that maybe doesn't know about the sport that's trying to get into it and they want me to give them a reason, you know, why is this, you know, why is this a good thing or was this cool? Is this normal? You know, to try yeah. to tell them, no, it's not normal. And no, also, it's not really the coolest thing either because, you know, I don't get pleasure out of the fact knowing that one guy, you know, might have just been – millimeters inches i'm not sure how far away he could have just lost function the last thing we want to see is somebody get physically injured and paralyzed or whatever there on on, on the cage floor it's, it's just a reminder i just i just hope it serves as a reminder to have that same reaction for everybody like listen man i know we talk shit and whatever just just remember the men and women that step into the cage man they really are putting their lives on the yeah, line i sure. know that may sound like a cliche but when you see things like this you realize they really are um you know, I've talked about in the past, so, you know, Kevin Ioli has been ringside for seven different boxers dying. Seven. That's crazy. Um, it's going to happen at some point in the UFC. It will. Uh, I do always wonder how it's going to affect me, how it's going to, you know, change my feelings for the sport. I don't know. Um, we'll find out over time. Ho hopefully I never have to find out, but um, it's, it's a very realistic part of this sport, and I just, you know, I hope people will always remember Treat those fighters with a grain of respect because they really are putting their life on the line when they step in there. Michael Bennett Page had, had some good interviews. Uh, obviously, Shamakar Sandu, Abby Saban were over there covering things up. Uh, Michael Bennett Page, man, he kind of says, look, the, the title really doesn't mean that much to me. I don't care. I'm, I'm just trying to revolutionize the sport. Said he actually wants to be the hoist Gracie of striking, which I thought was an awesome uh, explanation. You know, um, What do you think, Michael Bennett? Because I hear a lot of people saying, Man, Bellator is like spoon feeding this guy. They're not giving him tough enough competition. I'm kind of torn because I feel like Michael Venom Page. I honestly don't like, dude. I think Andre Korshkov would 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 lay waste to him. I'm not gonna lie, man. I think Andre Korshkov would be way too much for him. But uh, I honestly don't know if I care. Like, I feel like he's one of those guys where I was like, I just want to see MVP shine. I just want to yeah. see him going there, like. I, I don't know if that makes me a hypocrite or not. Like, I don't feel like – like, I feel like in the UFC the job is to determine who's the best fighter on the planet. I really do. I, in Bellator and World Series of Fighting and one, I don't feel like we're determining who's the best fighter on the planet. So what we're doing is just making entertaining matchups. And I kind of feel like with him, I don't care if they give him somebody to fight for the title. I don't care if they give him stiff competition. I'm, I'm kind of okay if they always give him strikers. Because I just want to see the show. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I would, I would think just for especially, you know, all the, the, the London English guys out there, like they want another champ out there. I would like to see him eventually get that title shot because I think he's put on some exciting ones. But you're right. I don't mind seeing him, you know, uh, 
just sort of blaze through these guys because I think they are trying to build a superstar for themselves. I right. think he's been kind of pushing for it and pushing for it, and I think they kind of been sort of maybe lukewarm over it. I'm not sure why that is, but I think with a, in another one or two of these wins, if it's like that, it's hard for them to not start saying, like, we got to start putting them into that title contention talk or at least give them a shot. And then, I mean, but if they're trying to build them up and, and maybe if – if, if the UFC is one of those things, maybe they're trying to build up this guy to, to say, hey, UFC, you want, I got a fight over here. You maybe want to try to cough up the money for it or whatever. I mean, who knows? But um, if he keeps obliterating guys like that, it's, it, it's going to happen sooner than later. They can't keep giving them cupcakes. Not that they are giving them cupcakes, right. you know, because at, at some point, you know, you have so many wins. And it, I mean, Cyborg's a tough dude, man. Yeah. But he's not. He's not a world beater, right? Yeah, now. he's not a top. He's he's. I'm not sure what his ring. He's not a top ten dude. Right. I mean, he's he's in there. Was he a top really ten? Stretching it there. Not, I know. No, not a top ten guy in the world. You or think he Bellator? is? Oh, no, not even. Close. Oh, okay. No, no. I, I meant like in Bellator. Oh, he oh in Bellator. Have him as like a top ten. That's a good question. I don't know what his ranking is there, but yeah, no, I'm not saying he's top no, ten no. in the world by any means. But I don't It'd know. Be what cool to see some rankings. You know, World Series of Fighting, they they have some rankings. It'd be kind of cool to see Bellator do rankings. Well, I mean, if they. If they, I mean, I think it'd be hard to, to not, you know. I think once you start doing that, then people expect the fights that make sense. Ah, uh, true too. You know, at this point, they kind of, kind of do whatever you want. Kind of do what they want. You yeah. know, they could have Hoist Gracie fight everybody in every division. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it Ken Shamrock so comes stupid, out of nowhere. But you realize they could actually <laughs> have Hoist Gracie fight. Like, it's, like it, when you said Hoist it, I'm like, oh, would. you're being silly. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, they could actually do that. He's back. He, you, oh. You've heard him say it. He's back. Uh, all right, uh, <laughs> listen, I don't want to keep us here all night, but I did want to ask you, uh, Dana White speaking at the Republican National Convention Oof. for Donald Trump. Did I, you? Did, did, I, I did not catch this. I, I mean, okay, I was. Okay, you haven't seen so no, you haven't I was, seen it. I, all right. And well, I heard little bits about it. I was just sort of, I mean, regardless of whatever lines, you know, I mean, obviously he, he delved in there. I was, uh, I really don't want to turn this into a political Well, whatever, that's the whole thing. I'm not a political was, guy, and I don't want to have a political argument, but I don't know. It, uh, I mean, it makes sense. They have a relationship. I mean, when you when you think about it, the, you know, the first two events that the USC had after Zufa bought the company, Donald Trump hosted them. You know, yeah. it was at the Trump Taj Mahal. And so it, it, I guess it makes sense. They've had this longstanding business relationship. And, and Dana's speech, I did watch it. I mean, it, it really didn't have anything to do with politics. It just had more to do with here's a guy who stood behind me, so now I'm going to stand behind him. But I don't know, man, especially given the controversy surrounding Donald Trump. I mean, I guess there's always controversy surrounding uh, political candidates. But, but with Donald Trump, it seems even greater than anything else. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It felt it felt weird. Yeah. It felt weird. Well, it makes sense now when you see their, their reaction to fighter union groups and other <laughs> sort of things of that sort. You know, it all, a lot of it makes sense, you know, where sort of their political uh, – aspirations or what are political thoughts lie but whatever i don't want to go there it's a it's a slippery slope that oh, definitely. i'll say something that will piss off our three listeners that we yeah. have sorry mom and <laughs> <laughs> and so it's better to leave it but hey if anything else i'm glad to put a lot of eyes because maybe a lot of people said hey who's this dana white you know that maybe a lot of the people that were watching convention didn't know or whatever and you know if anything else if it brought some new eyes to the fact of the ufc Good for him. Bro, that's some silver lining shit right I, there. I'm, I was looking for the most positive <laughs> part that I could think of. <laughs> All right. Uh, last thing I wanted to say, uh, while we were in Sioux Falls, we had a chance. We had a, a – uh, there was nothing going on in the morning the day of weigh-ins, and so we actually uh, went to a golf tournament that was being hosted by American Ethanol and Luke Rockhold and uh, got a couple of interviews while we were out there, which was cool. They were nice enough to let us just drive around the golf course and go interview people, and we got a handful of them. And uh, one of them that really stood out was Gian Vellante, who uh, who may have had a couple of frosty beverages at the time. He may have been roadshow ready. <laughs> may have been roadshow ready. Uh, but he said, I think I could get in there tomorrow and I could beat Daniel Cormier. Yeah. And I saw a lot of people giving him hate, and I just got to say, I loved it. I thought it was yeah. great, man. Like, that's the attitude I want out of fighters, man. And, and I, I saw him getting hated on. And uh, I don't know, man. I just wanted to give some love because I thought it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, maybe he did have a few drinks, whatever. But, hey, it's most of those fighters, I think, at, 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 at that level will say they'll get in there ready to fight anybody, whoever, right. wherever. So kudos to him for saying, eh, you know, whatever. People are going to hate on all kinds of shit, you say. So, you know, as I'm sure we'll get some more hate from this 
episode like we do from certain people in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, whatever. I mean, do I think Volante would really do any damage to Cormier or whatever? No. But I'll tell you what, he did say, I like the fact that he said it, but what he also said was he'd like to fight Steve Bosse at UFC 205 if he can get it yeah. in Madison Square Garden. You know what? Sign me up for that fight. Those are two dudes that are just going to yeah. stand in front of each other and punch each other in the face. That's true. That would be a fun one. Yeah, why not? I think that's a good one. I'm eh, – I would probably give him the edge over Bossy on that one, but you never know. Bossy's a tough dude. Tough dude. I like it. I like to see it. All right. Well, Cool Coffee, it's been fantastic to have you back. It's Any good to be back. Last am updates. I, am I supposed to, like, make out with you now or, like? The, sir, that's only with my new co-host, <laughs> not my original co-host. That I don't, I, don't, I don't dip the pen in the company ink there. Yeah, we that's haven't had enough frosty beverages for all that. Only with the guest co-host, my friend. <laughs> uh. those, those loving Canadians. <laughs> Nothing like the... Loving embrace of a warm Canadian man. They smell like maple syrup, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> Is that it from you? <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. Well, in, in that case, I'll say to everybody, even you, Jason from Arizona, thanks for listening. All right. Feeling good? <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Excuse me. There you go. Whoops. First. First of the bloopers. All right. <laughs> that was yeah, you highly sound actually pretty good. I sound nasally and less good. It's been so long. I know. Do I need to like be a Brazilian woman? Hello, John. <laughs> I wonder if <laughs> you ever seen Michael without his beard? Yeah. You, I wonder if I would even recognize him. No, you don't. Yeah. He's a good-looking dude, man. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, like that's a hand. I'm like, that's fucking cute. <laughs> yeah, he's absolutely unrecognizable with that beard. All right, good. Yep. Cool. Hopefully, like the boy band songs. I don't know what B Dub's doing with their music tonight. <laughs> Hopefully, most of that's not bleeding onto the thing. Like, cause I feel like you give that pause for the end where the the audio is gonna go into the thing, and then they just hear this. Whatever that is. <laughs> I'm like, I promise, folks, I did not mix that into this is, the... This is not our stuff. <laughs> this is not our soundtrack. This is not our stuff. All right, we're rolling? Yeah.